Hey designers, welcome back to another new video on our Figma UI Kit series. So if you're new here, I would suggest you start with the first video on this playlist because that'll give you a bit of a context on what we're doing on the CDs. And you'll find the link for that on the card somewhere on the top. You can check it out. But if you've been following along with me so far, then we are good to go. Today, I'm going to show you how we can create an interactive checkbox component. So first, we'll go through the UI kit that I shared. We'll see what we're going to create and see a demo of it. And then I'll be showing you how we can create that from the scratch. So without any further ado, let's jump straight on my screen and get started. So as you can see, this is the UI kit uh, that I shared with you. And this is the checkbox component that we have. So as you can see here, we'll have only one property itself, which is basically to select the number of options that we have for the checkbox. So this is an interesting example where we can see how we can create a nested interactive component. So we'll be using one interactive component inside another one to create a simplified version of it. So let's see how we can do this, right? So quickly jumping onto the demo. So here we have a frame. I'll go to the assets panel here and check our checkbox box component right here. So once I drop it onto the screen, I'll just align it to the center. And here you can see that it has an option to select the number of options. So I can change it to three, change it to four, whatever you want, right? So once we do that, we can change the option values. And if I click on the play button here, then I can just simply select these options, right? I can check, uncheck, and it works seamlessly, right? So as you can see, I've taken a fresh uh, Figma file here with just the color styles in it. And firstly, I'll just take a frame. I'm just taking a frame right here. And I'll just paste the checkbox image here just for reference so that we know what all elements we need in a checkbox. So as you can see, we need three elements to create a basic checkbox here. The first one is your label. That is the question for the checkbox. And then we have the icon, which represents if it is checked or it's unchecked. And then we need a particular value for it. That is the options that we provide to the user. So these are the three elements that we need here. So for that, firstly, I'm going to take a text and this is going to be our checkbox label. And then we need one more. This will be be our option. So this is going to be option one. And then beside this, we need an icon, right? So for the icon, you can basically go to a plugin like Iconify. So just go for Iconify and search for checkbox and you'll be able to find a lot of designs, right? So you can pick any of these or you can do it yourself. It's pretty simple. You just draw a square, give it rounded corners and draw a small tick and you're done with it, right? So I've already created it. I have my icons here. So you can just create the icons and just add it as a multiple component set and you can start using it. If you want to see how to do this and you can check the previous video of the radio buttons. I've already shown you how you can create an icon and make it a component set. So check that video. So now I can simply go to assets and drop in a local component for the icons that I created here. So I'll just drop in here and from the right, as you can see, I can change between the check on and check off, right? So I'll keep it a check off and I'll also change the color here to the gray because it's unselected. So I'll make it gray. So right now we have all the elements that we need for creating a simple checkbox. The first thing we're going to do is select both of these and and add it into an auto layout. I'm going to use shift A, the shortcut for adding auto layout. And then we're going to set the spacing here, let's say eight. And then as I told you, we are going to create a nested interactive component, right? So the, the reason we are doing this is it'll reduce a lot of our effort. We will not have to create a lot of variants in our main component. So doing this will reduce a lot of our effort. Let's see how we can do that, right? So for that reason, I'm going to take this and make this our base component, which is interactive. For that, I'm going to make this a component and then again, add variant to it. So this will act as a base interactive component. So in this, this will be the unselected one and this will be the selected one. So for that, I'm going to select this icon change it into the selected state and change the icon color as well. Okay. So this is our off and this is our on checkbox. So the next thing is we're going to add the interactions to it as well. So I'll go to the prototype tab and on click of this, you want to change to this state on click, just change it. That's fine. And this one back to the first one, because once you click on the selected one, it has to turn off, right? So as you can see, our basic block is ready here. I'm going to delete this for now. Just place this to the side here. And then from this, we are going to basically take the instance. You can directly pull instance from here or just go here and drag this and drop it here, right? So this we are going to use as our base component for the main component that we are creating, right? So I'm going to place this one just below this and then select both of these and add it or make it a interactive component, right? But before that, we need to also do one thing. We need to create multiple instances of this. So for that reason, I'm just going to duplicate one of this, place it below here and then select both of these, add it into an auto layout. So just add it into an auto layout because as we keep adding, the spacing has to automatically adjust, right? So if I select this and duplicate this, you can see that the spacing, we don't have to worry about it. And once you do that, just select both of these and create a component for this. So I'm just going to say create component and this will act as our main base component. And now we'll add uh, variants to it, right? So I'm going to click on plus 
to create a variant for this. The variance or the property that we're going to create here is number of options and that will do the trick, right? So let's first see how this works and then we'll start adding variants. For that, I'm just going to take a frame right here and then add our component into this. So we have added the component. Let's play this and see if it works fine. So as you can see, I can just select this. I can remove it. It works perfectly, right? So the working of a basic interactive component is done. Now all we are left is to add property to it using which we can select the number of options that we want in our designs. And for that, I'm going to select this and we are going to create uh, one with four options, one with five options and one with three options, right? And for that, we're going to come here and create variants with different number of options. So the first one, let it be with five options. The second one with four options. For that reason, I'm going to delete one of those. And as you can see, it's moving down, right? So for that, we need to set the constraints to the top, right? So I'm just going to undo this one and select the options inside this and set the constraints to top and left. So doing this, I can just delete this and it'll respect the constraints and stay at the top itself, right? So we want that to happen. And now again, select this and add one more variant to this. And in this one, we are gonna set this to number of options as three. So you'll notice one more thing that this height of the component is remaining the same, right? So if you want the height of the component to adjust as per the number of options we have in it, this has to be an auto layout, right? So when you create the first one itself, instead of directly creating this as a component, make sure you create an auto layout. So for that, I can just select this and change it into an auto layout. So I can just add auto layout to this. You can see that it automatically adjusts, right? So I just convert this into an auto layout. And now as I delete the options, it'll automatically, the, the height of the parent will adjust to it, right? So I'll just undo that. And now we want to create a property here, select the main component frame here and choose a property. So automatically a property. So by default, a property gets added. We can just rename this and utilize it for the number of options property. So I'm just going to double click on this and say number of options. And this property can be used for creating the number of options, right? For selecting the number of options, right? So I'm going to select the first one and the number of options would be five here. So I'm just going to change it to five. This one would be four and this one would be three. So now we have set an option using which we can select the number of options. So to see that in action, I'm just going to go to the frame that we created and select this one. And now you can see we have an option to select the number of options, right? So I can just select this and change the number of options to three, two, and so on, right? So that is the best part. You don't have to go back to the interactive component, delete the options or do anything. Everything can be done on the design itself. So now if I set this to three, and now if you go ahead and play this one, you can see that the number of options has already changed. And now I can just play around with this and it works seamlessly. So that is how we can create an interactive checkbox component. And we also saw how we can utilize nested interactive components to reduce the number of variants that we create. And in our next video, we're going to see how to create a toggle switch. It's going to be a very short and simple tutorial, so you can check it out. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.